Hello everybody and welcome back to the Okami walkthrough. So we found one of the three missing canine warriors. Yeah, we're just going to have to keep going to try and find the other two. Obviously we know that one's in Agatha Forest and one is in Kimiki Village. So that's where we're going to have to head. Now... Something that I do think is a really nice touch is after you've dealt with Mr. and Mrs. Cutter, whenever you return to their house afterwards, it's just a normal house. So none of the creepy music plays, and it's just a much more pleasant experience. Also, because we've found Nuragami, and we have the power of fountain, we can now get up here to get a clover. It is really fun being able to do all these new little tips and tricks. More all these little tricks than all these little tips and tricks, because I'm not really getting any tips. But <laughs> it's, it's fun to be able to go back to areas that we've already been to and find new things to be able to do. Because it does just kind of feel like the world expands as you get more powerful. And that's always an absolute kind of pleasure in video games. Obviously there are certain games where backtracking is a massive pain. I mean I'd say of all the instances of backtracking in Okami, this is probably one of the worst areas if you go in the path that I'm going. If only because that's pretty much the only thing that you can get from this corridor right now. You can't get anything else. So it's a bit of a trek for very little reward, but everything else is always pretty much in your path. So it's nowhere near as horrendous as it could have been. But also I have to I am so glad that we are in this part going to get the power to be able to change day to night. Because it's a power that kind of you want for quite a lot of the game if you play it in the manner that I do. And so it's just like, ah! Just want to be in control of the days. Why won't you let me? But it's fine, because, I mean, in the grand scheme of the entire arc of the game... Eh, this isn't that far into it, in all honesty, so... It could have been a hell of a lot worse. It really, really could have been. Still, once we get to Agatha Forest, we can see Kakari here and, uh, yes. Unfortunately, Kakari, we have not seen Umi. And so he's talking about this whopper that swallowed the moon, apparently. We'll find out more about him a little bit later on, but seeing as we are back here near Kiba, let's just get this wood map whilst we're here, because... Hey, we've got... We have, well, we had 60 demon fangs. Why not use them? It's not like we're really going to be, you know, doing much else with it. Now, before you can actually find Umi, who, yes, Umi is going to be our next canine warrior, if you hadn't already figured that out, and I mean I'm sorry but it'd be daft if you hadn't figured it out. Yeah, we need to do a little something else. Obviously we need to pick up all of these treasures, because now we can do that because of water spout. And uh Yes.
I have to say, we're making quite nice progress in terms of the stray beads and also all of the feeding. I mean, just look at that. We've already fed all of the sparrows, which is glorious. Obviously, there's quite a bit more of the world to explore, so... Yes. But basically, this is what the, um, the tomes look like. While I will not be showing off, like, all of the fishing... In one of the extras, I'm pretty sure it's like the first part of the extras, I will be showing off all of the descriptions in all of the tomes. So, look forward to that one. It's another one of my world-famous, incredibly long extras parts that just show something that nobody in their right mind would show. <laughs> Either way, before we can actually try and find Ume properly, we have to go up to the spring, because somebody's waiting for us. And it's very important that we help them out. Hello, Kushi! Now, you may remember that when we were in Sas Sanctuary, I mentioned that I messed up during a cutscene by skipping it, because it's a frustrating thing of the Wii version that is great, but also a pain in the backside. So no matter when you play the game in the Wii version, you always have the option to skip cutscenes. That's not the case in the PS2 version, I'm not sure whether it's the case in the PS3 version, but I highly doubt it. And in those games, after you beat the game the first time, then you're able to skip, but in the Wii version you can skip any time, which works as a positive. However, because of the way the Wiimote is, it's surprisingly easy to catch the plus button when you're pressing the A button. And what happened was I skipped this cutscene. And it was just like, no. Because it's not even a cutscene that you can start up again after you've finished it so it was just like oh that was like half an hour or so just gone because I had to redo everything which was it, it was frustrating actually no it was this cutscene in particular because either way but we've helped Kushi fill up the barrel which she needs to uh, make the 8 purification sake. And she says she's going to carry it home. I don't think she's quite going to manage that, to be honest. But... God damn imps. Getting in the way of everything. And oh, I love you, Susano, so much. <laughs> now, there's something that's really, really awesome that you can do during this. Because obviously Susano is an absolute useless sod and we can't do anything without our help. But if you mess up this quick time event, which you're going to see in a second, then <laughs> obviously you'll have to redo it immediately, but uh, Susano will get loads of scratches all over himself and uh, pretty sure that the uh, his butt flap will be cut open. So, you get this wonderful cutscene all with his butts open, which is just stupid and hilarious.
Oh, it's so satisfying. It's just the way that that music coincides with the helping Susanna out, and it just works so amazingly. It's one of the, like, things that is also glorious in The Wonderful 101, which, yes, I am bringing up, because I'd say, for the most part, Okami does do quick time events right. There's a slight frustration with certain elements of drawing, as will most definitely be the case a, a reasonable amount later on. But... The Wonderful 101 does quick time events a hell of a lot better because it gives you a reasonable amount of time to complete those quick time events. But also they are so cool that you want to do them, and also failing isn't necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't give you a game over, and neither do the ones here. So I mean, it's proof that Hideki Kami does know what he's doing when it comes to quick time events. It's just that, for some bizarre reason, he decided to be an absolute sod when it was in Bayonetta. Indeed, because now Kushi's going to have to do it all by herself, and I'm sorry, but I think she's going to struggle. But, that was definitely Kokari, and he is in trouble. So not only have we had to save Kushi today, we've also got to save Kokari. And also, the canine track has appeared, so if you didn't realise the dog that we were looking for was Ume, you sure know now. Now, if you return to the same place where Kukari was fishing the last time, he will be there. And things are about to get serious in terms of our fishing. Oh, good god. That thing is big. And it's got Umi. So, yeah, definitely gonna have to do something about that. He's not dead just yet, kids, don't worry. But that was Whopper. Now, they never specifically give Whopper a species. He's just always called Whopper, or Jozu in the Japanese. Um, physically, he resembles a catfish, and you can catch other catfishes in the game, so that's why that is signalled as its most likely species. It's just absolutely ginormous. Now the legend around Whopper in this game is that Whopper ate the sun. No, not ate the sun, ate the moon. And yeah, that's just mean. But it's also a very important thing to note, considering if we can hopefully catch Whopper, we may gain something from it. Obviously we'll hopefully save Ume and then everything will be fine, but might get something else from it as well. And there's Whopper himself. You can tell because he's a big fish. Big fish, small pond. How so? I have no idea how he fits in this, because, good god, it's... It's small, considering how large he is. 
Either way, I'm not sure whether there is a thing in Japanese mythology about catfishes and the moon, or if there is something to do with a fish eating the moon. There probably is. But I'm not sure. I know for a fact that catfish are sometimes linked in some form to earthquakes. Because that's where you get Whiskash in Pokemon. That's what he's based on. And I would assume that there's some moon related stuff going on there. Because I'm pretty sure there is some sort of crescent on his design. But, oh, Kakari. I'm pretty sure he's okay. But before we find out about Ume's fate, the moon's reflection has been restored. And... Yet the moon's not there. I think it's time for a constellation. <laughs> so, this wonderful little rabbit. Once we've done the whole celestial brush thingy majiggy, is Yumigami. Which literally means God of the Bow. Now the reason that it's uh, Yumigami, so... In Shinto mythology, the moon god is named Tsukuyomi no Mikoto, or Tsukuyomi. Which is a compound of Tsuki, which means moon, and Yomi, which means to read. In the Nihon Shoki, the name is spelled as Tsukuyumi, which means Moonbow. Though the spelling Yumi is most likely a variation of the spelling of Yomi. Yumi means bow or arc, which possibly refers to the crescent moon, well, the crescent shape of the moon. And. Apparently, Yumigami's identity refers to the Japanese interpretation of the patterns on the face of the moon as a rabbit pounding out mochi. Which is kind of a type of food. Now, apparently, the traditional act of pounding mochi is usually performed by two people. And in that scene that we just saw, both Amaterasu and Yumigami we're working the mochi as it is traditionally done, while well, one pounds... Well, where one pounds, while the other in-between poundings needs the mochi. You also have the fact that Yumigami doesn't really seem to like Ami that much, as she attempts to hit Ami with her mallet when they first meet. There's the implication there that it's representing the natural conflicts between the moon and the sun, or the fact that all rabbits versus wolves. However, it could have just been her trying to prevent Ami from eating the mochi, as drool can be seen dripping from her mouth. The behaviour of Yumigami may also be based on Am Amaterasu and Tsukuyomi no Mikoto's rivalry after the latter killed the food goddess Uke Mochi for disgusting him at the way she makes food by spewing items onto the world. This murder angered Amaterasu, so her and the moon god departed to different parts of the sky, forming the split between day and night. So, there's quite a lot of interesting stuff going on with Yumigami. But also, we now know that Ume is really the canine warrior Jin. Now, Japanese name is Jinko, which means Dog of Benevolence or Dog of Humaneness. And he is a Shiba Inu, in terms of his breed. 
Now, in terms of his actual name of Ume, I'm not sure whether I brought this up back way, way, way back when we first met them, but an Ume is a type of plum. Which is very popular, or at least sort of popular in Japan because it's quite common. Uh, so, they do umeboshi, which is literally dried ume, or pickled ume. So it's like dates and all that jazz. But, seeing as I've realised my mistake with earlier canine warriors, yeah, just use those sakes. Because it's just going to make these things go so, so, so much quicker. That's basically how you get that done. Without any of that, you are just going to be suffering a lot. Now, Ume's orb is the Justice Orb. I'm not, I haven't got my uh, art book to hand, so I can't tell you what he would have had. But, either way. It's important to know what he actually has rather than what he was going to have. <laughs> but there we go! We've found two of the three canine warriors. So, pretty much, we've only got one dog left. Now, if you haven't fed Ume up until this point, you still can. All you need to do is uh, press plus and try and feed him that way. Obviously, I already have fed him, so I don't have to worry about it. I did, however, forget to feed Take. And I will be running back to try and find him later on. Because at present, he is the only dog that I have actually missed. Bar, perhaps... Tay. Pretty sure I didn't feed him, but I will be soon enough. Now, obviously, we need to return to Kimiki Village, so let's go through that shortcut that we opened up, and hopefully we'll be able to find the last canine warrior. Let's do this.